What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is tackle three difficult problems that you can expect to see when trying to solve a system of equations by graphing. Now remember, when we're trying to find the system of equations by graphing, what we're going to want to do is graph the two lines and then use the intersection point. And you can see in this first example, I have both of my equations in standard form. Now we want to find the intersection point of our two equations. We want to make sure that our two equations are going to be in slope intercept form. Remember, that's going to be in the form of y equals a mx plus b. The reason why these problems can trip up students is because we have to go ahead and solve each of these equations equations for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put both these equations. I'm going to do work on the left-hand side and I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. So let's go ahead and rewrite the first equation. All right, now let's go ahead and solve for y. So again, what we need to identify is what is being applied to y, right? You can see we are adding a 4x because that's a positive and we're actually multiplying by negative five. So therefore, I'm just going to go ahead and apply my inverse operations to go ahead and solve for y. Okay, and you see this problem wasn't too bad, right? Y equals a four fifths x. Now again, we don't have a b, so you could always go ahead and write that in as a zero. So basically my y intercept is going to be at zero and then the slope is right the change in the y over the change in x is going to be a four fifths. So therefore, I'm going to go up four, one, two, three, four, and then over five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I'm going to do that in the same way going down to the left, just because I don't know where this intersection point is. I always like to go ahead and find two points from my original y intercept, one to the right, as well as one to the left. So to go ahead and find down to left, I'll just do a negative four over negative five, because again, that's still a four fifths. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And now I'll just go ahead and connect these line two points. Now we need to go ahead and apply this process for the second equation. So I'll go ahead and rewrite it and then go ahead and solve for y. Okay, now you can see, again, I just use my inverse operations, right? I subtracted the three x and I divided by negative five. And that gives me an equation. Y gives me a three fifths x plus one. Now in this case, we have a y intercept, right? Which is gonna be one. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot a point here. And then now I can just go ahead and follow the slope. Now this one is not very obvious where this intersection point is gonna be. So I'm just gonna go and follow the slope exactly as it's written as a three fifths. So that's gonna be up three over five. So what we'll do is go up three. So so one, two, three, and then over five. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see here, this is actually going to be our intersection point. So now what we need to do is go ahead and figure out, well, where exactly is this point, right? And by looking at the table, which hopefully I went ahead and graphed correctly, is going to be at the coordinate point of one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So that's going to be at the intersection point of five comma four. All right, now in this next example, you can see it's basically kind of the exact same thing going on, right? We have two linear equations that are set in standard form. So the best advice I can give to you when you have equations that are in standard form, don't try to solve them using the intercept method. While the intercept method is very helpful in graphing linear equations, it doesn't really help us find the intercept point unless you're being really, really exact with your graphing, which we know is not always going to be the case. So the best way to be able to find that exact intersection point with two lines that you're graphing is using slope intercept form. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite these two equations and again, solve for y using my inverse operations. Okay, there's a couple things that I wanted actually to mention about this, which I didn't talk about in the previous example. Notice when I divided a negative six on both sides, I divided the negative six into the nine as well as to the 24. So it's really important to do that. A lot of students will sometimes only choose like one of those numbers and that's incorrect. You gotta make sure you divide when you're dividing a whole expression by a number, you gotta make sure you divide both of your terms by that value. The other thing I want you to see is I just kind of wrote this as like a nine over six and then plus a negative four. And then I just rewrote one extra line and as, as the simplified version. Because typically when we're graphing, we always wanna use a simplified version. A lot of times students can make mistakes when they're trying to do so much math in their head. So that's why I just went ahead and wrote this extra line, which I really didn't have to, but it just kind of a lot of times helps me make sure I'm keeping the counting of doing all the steps correctly. All right, so now let's go and do the second equation. Okay, now in this equation, I did do the math a little bit in my head. A lot of times we are taking a test or a quiz, we are kind of heading against time. It really just kind of comes down to your comfort level and I just don't want you to be making mistakes. But there's something really, really important that I want you to understand here is we actually have the exact same equation. So if you didn't simplify this, you might not have recognized that these are the exact same equation. That's why it's so important to make sure you can simplify your two equations. Now it's really important to remember whenever we have a system that's the exact same equation, Equation, what we have is what we call an inconsistent solution, meaning we have infinite many solutions. And the reason why I have infinite many solutions is because the graphs are going to intersect each other infinite many times because they're exactly on top of each other. So there's infinite many intersection points. Well, let's just go ahead and graph this so we have an idea of what this system looks like. But again, it is going to be the exact same line. So therefore, will be infinite many solutions. So again, I just went ahead and found the y-intercept, which is negative four, and then I went up three over two to go ahead and find my next point. And when I had to connect to those, I only needed to do it once guys, because the same line exactly the same. But again, remember whenever this does happen, that's going to give us a solution that is infinite many solutions. Now in this next example, we're actually going to follow the exact same process, but what makes this one difficult is the fractions. And I know a lot of times when students see fractions, they immediately freeze up because a lot of times they perceive the problem to be much more difficult. And sometimes that is the case, but a lot of times that is not. Regardless, what I want to do for this problem is make sure I'm going to go step-by-step step to kind of explain exactly how 
how to do this with the fraction. Because again, I totally understand as a student how fractions can trip you up for a problem like this. But again, I want to get you to an A. And sometimes the difference between A and a B is being able to understand problems when fractions are involved. So again, to be able to graph this, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and rewrite our equations in slope intercept form. So therefore we have to use our inverse operations. So the fractions are not going to make the inverse operations any more difficult. We just have to undo what's happening to the Y. So we recognize the Y is being added to the one half X as well as being multiplied by a negative three. So again, just like the previous problems we did, we just need to undo these inverse operations. However, this is where some fractions will start to get difficult. But the first thing we want to do is just go ahead and subtract a one half X to both sides. And now we need to undo multiplying by negative three. So therefore we're going to divide by negative three on both sides. Now again, make sure you distribute this negative three to both terms. And again, here's where students a lot of times will get confused because now I have an equation of Y equals a negative one half X divided by negative three plus a 10 divided by negative three. This is where things get confusing. So first of all, we need to understand how can I simplify negative one half divided by negative three? Now, again, it's really important to remember whenever you're dividing by a number, multiplying by the reciprocal is the exact same operation. And the reason why again that works is I can rewrite negative three as negative three over one, right? And if I multiply by its reciprocal, a one over negative three, what does that turn into? That turns into a one. And dividing by one, like if I took five divided by one, that's just five, right? So if I take negative one half and divide it by one, I just have a negative one half. But we have to produce what we call equivalent fractions. If I'm multiplying by negative one third in denominator, I have to multiply that in the numerator, right? And so what I want you to see is like, oh yeah, negative one half divided by negative three is really just the same thing as multiplying by a negative one third. Now negative times a negative is a positive, right? And one half times one third is going to be a positive one over six. So therefore I have a Y equals a one over six X, right? That's gonna represent my slope. And then what about this Y intercept, which is a 10 over negative three. Negative three does not evenly divide into 10, right? So should I leave it as an improper fraction or rewrite it as a mixed number? And this is where I think mixed numbers confuse a lot of students. I don't want mixed numbers. And mixed numbers actually is going to be helpful when we actually graph this. But for right now, for writing the equation, let's just leave this as an improper fraction. Okay, now the reason why writing it as a mixed number will be helpful because if you wanted to graph this line, like this, this can be confusing for a lot of students. Now, again, the first thing we need to do is be able to identify what the y-intercept is. I don't want you putting this as a decimal, right? What I want you to do is think about like, what is negative 10 over three? Like, where is that on the y-axis, right? How do I find that value? So what I want you to do is just kind of go ahead and convert your improper fraction to a mixed number. And again, that does help you actually plot the value. Now, forget about the negative for a second. Let's just do 10 over three. Now, how many times is three divided into 10? Well, three times three is nine, right? And then we have a remainder of one. So 10 thirds is the same thing as a mixed number of three and one third. Again, I'm not gonna use that for my slope intercept form, but the reason why that's unhelpful because if I wanna find my Y intercept, right? That's a negative three and one third. So I'm going to go down three, one, two, three, and then I'm just going to go one third, right? So it's just a little bit more, right? Just a little bit more over. Now, if I want to go ahead and use the slope, I can go up one, right? Which would roughly be the same measurement tool, like up, like one of those little units. And then I'm going to go over six units, right? So if I, by going up, that takes me to like two and one third, and then I'm going to go over six units. That's going to be using these tick marks. So that's going to be a one, two, three, four, five, let's say a six right here. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and connect to those two points. So now let's go ahead and graph the one fourth X plus two Y equals negative two. Now again, I need to go ahead and rewrite that into my slope intercept form. So to go ahead and do that though, again, I'm just gonna rewrite this and just look at my inverse operations. And it looks like everything's gonna be pretty straightforward again, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and subtract a one fourth X to both sides. And that will leave me with a two Y equals a negative one fourth X minus two. And then I will divide by two on both sides and I get a Y equals. Now in this case, again, remember like dividing by a negative three is the same thing as multiplying by a one third, right? So dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half. So therefore that's going to give me a negative one eighth X and then two divided by negative two, right? Equals a negative one. So now I have Y equals negative one half X minus one. So this graph is I'm going to go down to negative one and then I'm going to go down one and then over eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, again, it looks like my graph might be a little off right on there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. But again, I think you maybe might be able to see like these two graphs are going to be able to intersect. It looks like at these two points. Now, again, I'm not exactly perfect. Let's go ahead and do one more line here going actually over. And I know I'm going to kind of get off on my graph here. But if I go up another one third and one, two, three, four, five, six, if I actually connect those two points. What you actually see is I actually didn't do a good job. I actually didn't do a good job graphing these. So if I actually connect these, you can actually see. And again, this is why it's always sometimes gets harder with graphing that we're gonna have our intersection over here. So let's go and find out where this intersection point is. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down, negative two. The best way to be able to check this would be able to use a algebraic approach. But again, you know, graphing depends on the restrictions. It's just important to be able to understand how to be able to graph something when you have fractions to write in slope intercept form, as well as how to graph something when you have fractions. You don't always have to have a Y intercept as an integer to be able to graph the equation. Just make sure you kind of keep the spacing exactly the same. So therefore you can go ahead and solve. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this video was helpful and hopefully you are now prepared to go ahead and get that A. If you need more examples on solving system equations by graphing, or you want to go and take a look at the notes that I provide in my courses, then go ahead and check out the resources and playlists I have for you down below, or go ahead and check out my next video I have for you here. Cheers.